All right, guys, it says a psychiatrist is asked by a primary care physician to test for intelligence of a two-year-old patient. Which of the following tests would be most appropriate? Is it A, the Stanford uh, Binet Intelligence? Is it B, the uh, Lighter International Performance Scale? Is it C, the Weschler Preschool Primary Scale of Intelligence? Is it D, the Weschler Intelligence Scale for Children? Or is it E, the WAIS um, test? So, and again, I, I may pronounce some of these names kind of incorrectly, but they're spelled, they should be spelled correctly. Uh, just forgive me if I'm pronouncing them different. But anyways, long story short, a psychiatrist, or it could be, a, they could have said a psychologist, um, and didn't necessarily have to be from a primary care. It could have been from a parent, could have been from a school, who, who knows? Anyways, long story short is they're testing for the intelligence, or IQ, uh, of, of a two-year-old. Now you may be saying, well, who's going to do that? I mean, why? You know, why? Um, Okay, don't ask why. Just say, look, it's we, we got to know for the for the USMLE, we have to understand uh, that there are going to be some questions, perhaps, uh, in terms of testing and intelligence skills. How you're going to differentiate these is ba mainly going to be on two things: age and the the reason for the testing. Like, if there's any, uh, we know the reason is IQ, but then there's going to be like uh, some test. You know, if you're hearing impaired and stuff, you're gonna you're gonna go in this direction. Okay, so those are the main two things. So. For the sake of the question, I'm just putting two years of age, and you'll understand why in a second. So, anyways, these are our choices. Now, to understand something, it, when it comes to IQ, okay, the I, IQ uh, is, you know, it stands for the intellectual, uh, it's, IQ stands for intellectual quotient, quotient, okay? And it's based on the assumption that the uh, intellectual di intellectual disabilities are normally distri normally distributed. Okay, now and that, and that and that could be that would have been a good question too. The you know an IQ test is based on the assumption that intellectual intellectual abilities. I'm sorry, excuse me. Intellectual abilities, not disabilities. Abilities are uh, distributed normally. Now here's a normal distribution curve, and the very center for IQ is going to say a hundred. Okay. It's going to say 100. Now, of course, that would that would say average. And then if we go one standard deviation out, and I've seen some questions on this, one standard deviation basically goes to 80 and then 120, right? 20 down, 20 up. <clears throat> so between 80 and 120 is one standard deviation. Now, what percent should fall within that one standard deviation? We know because we are very good at biostats, right? 68% is one standard deviation. So 68% of all the people should fall within that uh, between 80 and 120. You got to know that the average is 100 because on the USMLE, they may they may throw something at you about a person with an IQ of 79. And if you have no idea where that really falls on the scale, uh, you know, you're, you're, you know you're, you're up the creek. So anyways, long story short, intellectual quotient abbreviated as IQ. It's based on the assumption that intellectual abilities are distributed normally. The average is going to be 100. So, so now we have this two-year-old person, right? How do we, you know, how do we categorize someone that's two years of age? And there's a reason, right? What do you think your answer is? If you know it, go ahead and select it. Okay, we're really not sure. Okay, fine. The Stanford Binet Intelligence. The age that you could do this is between two and 85 okay big spread but the key is you could do this at two years of age why or how because it does not rely on language okay doesn't rely on language you know and we always think well wait a second why are you are you, are you you know are you just testing for deficiencies in a person you know like they're not, they're not meeting milestones or whatnot no this can also test for uh gifted children Okay, as, as, as well as the alternative going in the other direction. So the key is with the Stanford Binet, it is an intelligence test, given away there, right? Between 2 and 85. The lighter international performance scale, okay? You're going to know this test anytime there's someone that's nonverbal, okay? Meaning, you know, there could be someone with like autism. If you want to measure IQ in someone who's nonverbal or even someone who's got, uh, uh, you know, severe autism, you could go for the lighter international. For someone who's non-English speaking, you could go with the lighter international performance scale. It's going to measure IQ. <clears throat> now, the age range is 3 to 75. Um, but again, 
I'm not worried so much about this per se. I want you to know that the Light International is going to be for nonverbal autism, non-English speakers, uh, you know, even someone who's got a hearing impairment. Okay, so you can see where that one makes it kind of unique. Now, these aren't all the tests that are out there. It seems like there's there's countless, but these are the ones I want you to know for your step exams. Stanford Binet Intelligence, two years of age, 85, and this is going to be the youngest I'm going to see. Okay, so obviously this question is going to lean is going to lean toward that. Lighter International, you're going to think nonverbal autism, non English, hearing impaired. You're going to go with the lighter. Okay, the Weschler Preschool Primary Scale of Intelligence. You know, think preschool, and normally kids go to school, you know, five years of age, kindergarten, so pre-K or preschool can get you down between that three years of age, okay? So this one starts at three years of age, typically to seven, okay? So I wouldn't see a question where they would get, you know, they, that, that's why I put two here, because if I would have put three here, it could have been both Stanford Binet or the Weschler, and you don't have to really understand the difference between the two for the step exam, so that's why I went with two years of age. And then I don't I don't see him put them both in the same question, but Weschler Preschool. Now, I I spelled this out on the exam. They could just put W P P S I. Okay, just keep that in mind. But Weschler, the name Weschler, is very synonymous with I Q testing. The Weschler Intelligence Scale for children is six to sixteen. Okay, see that? So Weschler Preschool three to seven. Um, <clears throat> Should have said probably three to six. But Weschler Intelligence Scale for children is six to 16. And the reason I didn't spell this one out because it's the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale. So if I would have put, if I would have typed this out, you would have never, you know, you wouldn't have chose that for this guy because it's a kid. And of course, this one's going to be 16 to 90 years of age. So you can see Weschler's, you know, they pretty much, uh, you know, they pretty much got this cornered per, per se uh, as far as intelligence scales. But Someone who's two years of age, you got to go with the Stanford uh, Binet or Binet Intelligence Scale, 2 to 85. Doesn't rely on language. And then other intelligence scales, you could go the Weschler's preschool, three up, three to three to six or seven. Weschler for for scale for children, six to sixteen, and the adult for intelligence, W A I S. But again, be careful; they could just give you this on your exams and and not spell it out. So just remember W for Weschler Intelligence. So, what else do we got to know? When it comes to this stuff, I want you to also know about IEPs, right? These, that, this is, this, an IEP stands for, in a, in, a child, in a child in school, IEP, Individualized Educational uh, Plan. I want to say it's like program, but it was plan. Uh, but it's individualized, and that's where a kid would say a learning disability Okay, a learning disability, you know, they meet with, and, and I used to be a school teacher, and I, used to, and I used to work in special education, or exceptional education, they would call it, and so we would do IEPs, which were basically, you would do, you know, goals and objectives for each student that are very specific, and then, of course, those goals would follow that acronym, the, the SMART, right, when you write a goal, it should be a specific, measurable, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, okay, reproducible, and actually, I forgot all these, but it should be like a smart goal. But just remember, IEP is someone that's going to be in the school system. And sometimes doctors are, uh, they associate with it and then they give their input. Um, but it's all about uh, making sure that a, a child has access to education, to appropriate education. Um, and that studies have shown that they do better when, they're, when kids with disabilities are actually in the um, regular classroom. But that's what the IEP is for, is to make specific goals and objectives for kids to, uh, for their educational purposes. And let me see, what else do we know about this? We, we did the IQ, and then, but long story short, guys, what I would do, my takeaway point on this is, these are the tests that I would know. Stanford Binet Intelligence, the key is it goes all the way down to two years of age. Otherwise, you should be looking at the Weschler Scales. WPPI, PPSI, three to seven, skill for children, six to 16, and then the adult. And I'm telling you, they're gonna write, they're gonna probably put these names on there, the, just the acronyms. And then the lighter, you're gonna go with nonverbal, non-English, and autistic. Okay, guys? Now, just in review, uh, since we're here, real quick, you know, when we're doing these developmental milestones, uh, let's just do these by memory. If we did this, this is about where the, the, the child, what month can they do stuff? So at 
two months, they hold their head up. <clears throat> at four months, they can turn over. At six months, they can sit up. And uh, at eight months, they can crawl. And 12 months, they should walk. When I did the ages one, two, three, four, five, and six, at one years of age, they should draw a squiggly line. Two years of age, they should be able to draw parallel lines. Three years of age, they should be able to draw a circle. Four years of age, it should be a square and a cross. Five years of age, they should be able to draw a triangle. And six years of age, it's multi-sided objects, but then that's when they know death is permanent. And then if we did the, uh, the types of play, we got parallel play, uh, associative play, and then uh, cooperative play, right? This one just says they're kind of, yeah, you know, they're, they're sitting next to the kid, but there's really no, uh, they're sit sitting next to another child, but they're really, there's really no uh, connection between the two. They're just kind of playing on their own for the most part. Associative play, meaning they're kind of, uh, you know, they could be staring at each other, but they're not doing any type of communication where they're working on this. They're not on the same, uh, working towards the same goal. Now, in cooperative play, and again, this is probably more of uh, four to six, five to six, five to six, three to four, you know, in that, in that, in that, in that range. Cooperative play, meaning they're using social skills to kind of work towards a common goal. Okay, and then of course we did Piaget stuff. We got the sensory motor, um, and that's with object permanence. Then we got the uh, all the the other operational, right? We got the pre-operational stage. We got the concrete operational stage, and that's where they understand the um, pretty much the law of conservation when they pour the water or they understand the, ob the, the purpose of conservation. And then we got the uh, formal operational, which basically says, you know, they can form a hypothesis and stuff like that. Uh, and then who else we got on this? We got Mr. Vygotsky, who basically said, hey, there's more to it. There's more social influences are very important and that we should learn within the zone of proximal development. Okay, but in this one, I want you to do the test. Stanford Binet, 2 to 85, lighter, nonverbal, non-English or autistic people, lighter. And then Weschler's got the market otherwise with, with, these, with these ages. Okay? Hope it was helpful, guys. Mm -hmm.